With the all new tabs element feature, you can build something like this in a matter of minutes. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how and share everything you need to know about tabs. Let's get started. Within the insert panel under advanced and interactive, you can find the new tabs element. Let's drag and drop this into our base row. To best understand the tabs element, we need to take a close look at the layer panel. The tabs element consists of the menu, which is the top part and holds all the different content items and the actual content, which is the bottom part. As said, the menu holds the content items and also the trigger layer. Within the trigger layer, you can style the content items. So we can change the text, the font, the color, anything we want. And we can also work with interactions. By default, the tabs element has two interactions, a active interaction and a mouse hover interaction. The active interaction applies to the content item, which is active. And as you can see right here, the active interaction is set to the border. The border is black and it's set to the bottom with one pixel if we preview we can also see that whichever content item is active also has a black border on the bottom if we click on item 2 we can see that it now also has the black border by default there's also a mouse hover interaction so whichever content item is not active and when you hover over that item it will also showcase a border it's a black border with 30% opacity and it's also set to the bottom border and it's one pixel. So if we preview, as you can see, whenever you hover over a content item which is not active, you will see this black border with a lesser opacity. Then we have the content. So within content, we have the different items. If you want to create another item, you can simply duplicate one from within the layer panel and to change the actual text that appears within the menu, you need to select the item, go to the right panel, and here you can change the item. So we can call this tutorial. Now that we understand the basics of the tabs element, let's work towards our desired end result. What we want to accomplish is this right here. So if we take a closer look, we have three different content items within this tab. And within each content item, we have a column which consists of two rows. One row is filled with two text elements underneath each other. And the other row is filled with the image. So let's accomplish the same thing. So within this first content item, we can delete the text element that's currently in there and drag in two columns. There we go. This column on the left should occupy two text elements, a paragraph text which can contain the, uh, the quote, and then a small text element for his name. And then the row on the right should contain a image. What we also need to do is remove the fixed width, which is set by default on the tabs element. So if we delete the fixed width of 600 pixels, um, the width is set to 100%, so it will fill up 100% of the space available. And as you can see, it also does that. Now let's fill in the correct content. There we go. The correct content has been added. Now we should also change the name of this first item from tutorial to Andrew Huberman. So let's select item one, go to the right and change this to Dr. Andrew Huberman. There we go. This looks about right. Next, we should delete the fill color of the content element. So let's delete this. Let's also delete the fill color of this row on the left and the row on the right and set the main color to the base row right here. And there we go. The next thing we need to do is place the text element on top of this tabs element. So within the insert panel, let's grab this text element and drag it on top. And now let's change it to the correct text. The fastest way to get to our end result is just duplicate this first item, duplicate once, duplicate twice, and simply adjust the content. So first we can change the actual names of the content items. The first one to Allison. Felix and the second one to Sir Lewis Hamilton. 
There we go. And then within each item, we can just fill in the correct content. So let's do that. Now that correct content has been filled in, there are two more things that I want to do. Make this steps element responsive and change the style of the default content items. Let's first start with that. So let's select the trigger layer and then go into the style panel and change the default style to a bit of a lighter color. So right now the color to the text is set to black, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. And then within interactions, I want the color of the active item to be black. So there's a bit more of a distinction between the inactive element and the active element. So right now, if we preview, the inactive elements are this lighter gray color and the active element is black. And now let's make this steps element responsive. To do this, let's first preview what we have actually built and what it looks like on the different viewports. So on desktop, of course, it looks good. Then we go to laptop. It still looks good. On tablet, it starts to look a little weird. And on mobile, it's, uh, it's not good. So let's take a look at the tablet viewport first. So one thing we need to change right here it's not that hard, is actually change the direction in which these two rows are placed. So right now, this row on the left and the row on the right are placed next to each other, but what we want is that they're placed on top of each other. So we need to change the direction from horizontal to vertical. There we go. And then we can also do the same thing on the mobile viewport. It already looks pretty good actually, but one thing we should do is change the size of the text. So it's set to 32, let's change this to 24. There we go, this looks about right. And we can also change the size of the header text to 32, this looks good. Now that the first content item looks good on all devices, what we should do next is also make sure it looks good within the different content items. So if we select the Ellis and Felix content item, you can see that we still need to make this responsive. So it starts to look weird from the tablet viewport. So let's change the direction from horizontal to vertical. This looks good. Mobile, we need to make the text a little bit smaller. 32 to 24. There we go. And do the same thing to the last content item. Go to the laptop viewport. Change the direction from horizontal to vertical. This looks good. Then on mobile, we need to once again make the text a little bit smaller. 32 to 24. There we go. Now we preview and as you can see, it looks good everywhere in all the different content items and on all the different viewports. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have a good understanding of how the tabs element works and good luck.